every age has its stories of heroic men and women whose faith challenges them to reach out in heroic love and service to alleviate the sufferings of their brothers and sisters. This is the story of one such hero. He was born Joseph de Voister, a Belgian farm boy. He is known now to all the world as Damien of Molokai. Born into a poor Belgian farming family in 1840, Joseph de Voister left school at 13 to work on his parents' farm. Six years later, Joseph joined his brother in the Congregation of the Sacred Hearts of Jesus and Mary, taking the name Damien. In 1864, Damien's brother, who was also in the same order of religious calling, was ordered to Hawaii. But just before the departure, his brother became ill. Damien obtained permission from the superior general to take his place. Damien arrived in Honolulu in 1864 and was ordained a priest that May. He spent nine years on the Big Island studying the Hawaiian language, eating poi, building churches, and baptizing new converts. He often had to travel by canoe to reach remote locations. He was a strong athlete who could climb rocky cliffs, trek through lava fields, and scale 10 ravines to get to his parishioners. In 1866, Hawaii established a leper colony on the Kalupapa Peninsula. Patients were simply dropped off and left to survive on their own in the desolate, lawless place. The island was surrounded by the ocean on three sides and by a very high mountain cliff on the other. The lepers were taken from their homes and assigned as outcasts on the island of Molokai, never seen again by their families. A slow, painful death awaited them. Hawaiian bishop Louis Migrant strongly desired priests to minister on the island and asked for volunteers. He knew the assignment was equivalent to a death sentence. Damien joyfully and heroically offered himself, leaving for Molokai on May 10, 1873. Since he couldn't live with the lepers for fear of infection, Damien found shelter under the indigenous pandanus tree in Kalawau. Many arrived to see this priest who had come to work with them. They were sure he wouldn't stay long when he saw what life there was like. At first, the conditions around the lepers proved overwhelming. Damien often felt as if he had opened a door to hell. Victims wandered about, their bodies in ruin, and their constant coughing, the island's most familiar sound. Damien could hardly bear the stench. Eventually, Damien overcame the distressing sights and smells. Many patients living there required treatment, but had nobody to care for them. Other patients took to drinking and became severe alcoholics. Every kind of immorality and misbehavior was on display in the lawless colony. There was no law or order. Father Damien got busy right away. He cleaned up huts, nursed those who were very sick, and tried new medicines. Using his carpentry skills, he built houses, churches, orphanages, coffins, and even a water system. Those able to help were put to work building better houses. One early realization was that to show the lepers the value of their lives, 
he had to first demonstrate the value of their deaths. So he built a fence around the local cemetery, which pigs and dogs regularly scavenged. He also constructed coffins and dug graves, committing that each leper, even if marginalized throughout his life, would receive a decent burial upon death. His superiors had given him strict advice. Do not touch them. Do not allow them to touch you. Do not eat with them. But Damien made the decision to transcend his fear of contagion and enter into solidarity with the Molokai lepers. He brought the sacraments to bedridden lepers. He washed their bodies and bandaged their wounds. He tidied their rooms and did all he could to make them as comfortable as possible. What surprised the lepers most was that Damien touched them. It showed that Damien didn't want to serve them from afar. He wanted to become one of them. Damien knew that he might contract leprosy, but he believed that God could protect him from the disease for as long as he was needed. Miraculously, God protected Damien from leprosy for 11 years. Father Damien preached and offered mass, but he also built roads, water systems, orphanages, and churches. The moment he feared finally arrived in December 1884. One day, while soaking his feet in extremely hot water, Damien experienced no sensation of heat or pain a sign that he had contracted leprosy. Father Damien always began his homily with my dear lepers. One Sunday, he stood before his congregation and began his homily by saying, my fellow lepers. At first, it was very quiet. Then, people began to sob their beloved Father Damien had gotten the disease. Even though he was ill, Father Damien carried on his work. He wrote home to his brother, I make myself a leper with the lepers to gain all to Jesus Christ. After 16 years in the colony, Father Damien succumbed to leprosy on April 15, 1889. He identified closely with those he came to serve, and thus, before and after the disease, offered a powerful, concrete expression of solidarity. And it was for that reason he became known not by his homeland, but by the island community he served, St. Damien of Molokai, patron of lepers. St. Damien. You ministered to those in despair and isolation. I call upon you to open my heart and mind to care for the poor, the sick, the weary, and those forgotten. Bestow upon me the inner strength of faith and unconditional compassion to be a disciple of Christ. As a Spartan, I come before you a humble servant of God. Bless me with the spirit of your love and instill in me the touch of healing and grace that you yourself possessed. Amen. Saint Damien, pray for us. Whose faith challenges them. Just